we go. Set this up. Try and get it set up so that... streaming and I feel like absolute crap today um, just like garbage I uh, I don't know why I just don't feel good so we're uh, unofficially cringe um, yeah so we're gonna do some kit prep for work tomorrow the official training season starts back with the army reserves tomorrow uh, that's when we train so I need to get some gear prep because it's been a while I've left it over the summer since doing my PLQ course, so I need to get things tidy and squared away, ready to go to work. Now, one of the things that we're going to do tonight is ironing, because unfortunately, uh, as a soldier, you have to uh, iron. No, it's not unfortunately. I think I, uh, I kind of miss ironing, taking some pride and ownership in how you look. So, when is the vid we made last night being uploaded? It will be released tomorrow, good sir. I have already created it. It's going to be released tomorrow. Um, first things first, though. Uh, thanks for joining the stream, everyone. Uh, this phone will overheat. I can guarantee you of that. It will overheat. Um, when it does, I'll try and put you back in the fridge for a little while to cool you down. You know the score. You know the drills. Okay, you know the drills, guys. This phone is dying, and when it gets too hot, I have to put you in the fridge. So be prepared to be stuck inside of a fridge when you get too cold or too hot, because uh, it's going to. And that's why you'll see that you'll, you'll know when it's getting too hot, because the camera will slowly get slower and slower, because the FPS will drop. Uh, but anyway, we're going to try and do as much as we can uh, whilst we're here. Uh, so as you can see, I have my... Uh, I'll try and angle this a little better so you can actually see what's going on. There we go. Uh, as you can see, I've got my rock here. Um, it's set up right now for when I did a demonstration day on Canada Day. Um, it's pretty heavy. I overloaded it pretty hefty so that the public could realize, like, this is what we carry. This is pretty heavy stuff. Um, so, yeah, i got to get my small pack off the side of there because for the most part if I'm not using my small pack I tend to just throw it on the side of the rock because that's just the way I like it. Everybody has their own thing. Uh, I hate loose straps. Loose straps or loose clips. It needs to be tight. It needs to be snug. It needs to look like that. If it does not look like that I get extremely upset. Uh, I am super OCD when it comes to military stuff and army stuff. I don't know why. Well I do know why because I have some pride in what I do but if I see like rucks with like straps hanging all over the place, it just drives me absolutely mental, like totally mental. Uh, so right now I'm going to break that uh, that look because I've got to get my small pack off. So I'll be bringing that small pack. Shut up, Relogic. <laughs> Relogic is making reference to a time where I was um, when I was uh, uh, course senior on our DP1 artillery course. And everybody kept asking, hey, Matt, do we need to bring our small packs? Do we need to bring our small packs? And I'm like, yes, bring your small packs. We need to bring our small packs. Ten minutes later, like 20 people are asking me, should we bring our small packs? Yes, bring your small packs. And in fact, a good friend of mine uh, who me and Relogic obviously know is the same unit, um, he actually jumped in and was like, I can't stand this anymore. And he jumped in and he's like, no small packs. Like he's already told you like a hundred times, no small packs. Oh, sorry, bring small packs, sorry. So yeah, I'm even, I'm confusing, confusing myself, so. Uh, so yeah, the first thing we need to do is get this small pack off because I'm gonna need it tomorrow. I'm probably gonna have to put some PT gear in there because uh, training nights, we try our best to do PT whenever we can. So there we go, I'll be bringing our small packs. Uh, yeah, flappy straps drive me nuts. I just can't stand flappy straps. Anyway, we also have my tack vest here, which we're gonna tinker with a little bit. We're gonna try and clean this up. It's got like bug spray in it and stuff when I was doing uh, Canada Day as well. So we'll sort that out afterwards. It's not really my top priority right now. We'll do that later. Um, as I said, we're gonna do some ironing as well because well, I've gotta get my gear ready for, for work. Um, stay, stay boy. So small packs, first thing I need to get that packed up. Um, I have rigged this thing up so freaking tight. I mean, look at that thing, that's a thing of beauty right there, everyone. That's a thing of beauty. Not a strap loose in sight. Maybe a couple. That's only because it's been rolling around in the back of my truck for the last three months. Um, so anyway, we're going to get this thing out of here because there's no requirement for it to be strapped onto the side of my rock. And we're not going to use our rocks for training nights. That's not how it works. We just uh, we just use small packs with PT gear in it and anything else that we need for training. So the small pack is coming off. 
There she is, and that is definitely a small pack. It's been compressed into like a tiny little thing. It's actually a lot bigger than that. We'll, we'll fold it open so you can take a look. But as you can see, the, the capacity of this big boy is pretty hefty. I absolutely love these rucks. Uh, a lot of people don't like them. I personally love them. I think they're great for the Canadian Army, considering that we have so much stuff to carry in the winter time, and I mean it like so much winter gear. Uh, this big boy can hold a lot of stuff. Uh, I've actually seen a troop get inside of one <laughs> and be carried around on the ruck. A uh, small guy, but he still fit inside it, like literally up to his neck inside this thing. So this has been compressed down uh, hugely, like it's been compressed and tightened and snugged down. But when you put as much gear as you can in here and you put your extra pouches on, etc., it's huge. It's absolutely massive. Um, so those people who say, you know, uh, Canadian soldiers can't fight and they're not a good army, blah, blah, blah. You try putting one of these packs on with every bit of winter gear that we take into the field. Go for a little rock march with it. We'll see how you do. I can guarantee you're going to have a hard time. Um, but anyway, we don't need to talk to this guy anymore. We're done. We'll put that to the side and uh, we'll get back to my small pack. And it's pretty loaded. Like I said, I overloaded it a little bit so that the public could actually see uh, see what kind of weights we carry on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if you are sending me super chats, which I'm not sure if any of you have already, but my phone will not notify me of this. So if you have sent me or are going to send me super chats, thank you in advance, but I cannot, unless I am close to the screen, I'm not gonna hear it or it's not gonna notify me. So just so you know, I'm on the phone, which is, see how hot you're getting already. Oh yeah, you're getting warm already. I might have to put you in the fridge, guys. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I may have to put you in the fridge. You're already red hot. We'll give you like another five minutes and then we'll put you back in the fridge. This is ridiculous though. Like I need a new phone. It's driving me nuts. But priorities, boys and girls, priorities. And my phone is not a priority. <laughs> so let's get this small pack opened up. I'm gonna have to put some PT gear in here. Uh, I tend to put some documentation. Um, if I need to bring you know, lesson plans, etc. now that I'm trained to, I mean, I was already trained to give lessons, but now I'm actually qualified and allowed to train lessons put lessons plans and documentation in there and all that good stuff. Um, but for the most part, be PT, side pouches. We have quite a few side pouches in this one. Two, two side pouches. So I don't think I'm gonna require those. So we'll just put them in the rucksack. But again, the small pack, it's not exactly huge. It's got enough to for, for sure fill um, a good day, day patrol routine in there. Extra ammunition and um, you can slap the two side pouches on there if you wish to. Um, which is really nice. I actually really like the small pack. I like the straps. Um, they're pretty comfy. I've had no real problems with them at all. Uh, it's a nice pack. And the, uh, the ribbing on the back, again, everybody has their preferences. I have no issues with the small pack or the ruck. I think they're really good bits of kit. Um, no issues on my back. I could, I mean, I've taken the small pack on ruck marches and, and small pack marches many, many times, no issues at all. Um, so I'll put some PT gear in there later. Um, first things first, I'm going to put my jacket in there uh, because waterproof jacket, absolutely fantastic bit of gear. Um, very, very nice actually. Uh, Canadian flag on the side, there we go, represent, there you go. Um, yeah, so this is a really nice waterproof jacket. It is not uh, insulated very much. It's a very thin waterproof material. You don't need it to be insulated. That's why we have our winter jacket, which is a lot more heavy. It's a lot thicker. Um, and the winter jacket is outstanding. I would have loved the winter jacket um, in the British Army. I swear, it's amazing. It is so good. You can get that thing completely drenched with rain or snow. It keeps going, keeps you warm. It's thick, it's cozy. It's just epic. It's such a good jacket. I don't have it on me right now because we're not quite into the winter season where I actually require it. Um, but this, the, 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 they're pretty much the same kind of style um, in terms of like the layout and setup. On this particular jacket, you can actually um, open them up and actually have reflective um, patches on there so if you're doing things like guiding vehicles or guiding equipment uh, at night or in an environment where it's you know high traffic you can actually put sort of high vis things on there and they just fold out and fold back over which is really nice so really nice jacket honestly I really really like them um, comes with a hood I've taken the hood off because the hood drives me nuts um, I tuck it away in my side pouch if I need it I put it on but for the most part I just hate having something ruffling against the side of my head um, I'm gonna put you I'm gonna put you in the fridge I have to put you in the fridge because this phone is about to explode. So I'll put you in the freezer just for a little while, okay? Just a little while. It's it's not like it's a punishment or anything, but I have to put you in there because you're going to cook. So I'm putting you in the fridge for a little while again. I'm sorry that I have to do this. I'm really sorry I have to do this, okay? Okay, you're going in. Ooh, there goes the chicken nuggets. Okay, I 
I've got to leave you in there just a little while, guys, okay? I'm sorry, I have to do this. I've got to cool you down. Or the, or the stream's going to cut off, so just stay there. I'll put a flashlight in with you again. I'm gonna put a flashlight in so you can see what's going on. I'll be back. I'll be back. Good. Okay. I'm sorry. You're probably cooling down a little bit better now. Uh, you're actually staring at a dilly bar from Dairy Q. Dairy Q? Dairy Queen right now. Um, yeah. Uh, let's just check the back. Yeah, you're still pretty warm. So I'll give you another like five or ten minutes and then we'll get you, I'll take you back out again. Okay. I'm really sorry. You should have cooled down enough by now. There you go. You're a little better. You're not much better, but you're better than you were. Okay. So I'll take you out the freezer for now. And I will set up. We're going to do something else now. Just to... So I'm right beside the fridge. So I can actually cool you guys down straight away. I'm going to do some ironing. Because it's ironing time. And, uh... Unfortunately... Ironing is part of the job, folks. Why is that like that? There we go. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's ironing time. We've got to do some ironing. Look after uniform, folks. It's important. Hopefully you don't overheat too much again, or too quickly again. It can give you a little bit of time to... Okay. So here we are, doing some ironing. Catpat tunic, that we call it. The tunic. Okay, so, lightweight, horrible if it's wet. There's not, it's not a good time if you get this thing wet. Um, but for the most part, fairly good bit of kit. Pretty much the same as the British Army's kind of setup when we used to have the 95 shirts. Uh, they're actually really easy to iron, not a big problem. The pockets are the hardest part. The pockets are the hardest bit to do because the way that they carry so much, they make big folds, and the folds just like decrease. So I'm also going to get my uh, Mark I thread burner. I'm gonna take these threads to Chinatown, okay? So if I see any threads, it's getting afterburned. Um, okay, so let's get going. So as I said, the hardest part is the pockets. Doing the pockets is the hard part. Remember folks, I'm probably gonna to have to throw you in the freezer again soon, so be aware of that. I do apologize, I really do. I hate having to interrupt the stream putting you in a bloody fridge, but that's just the way life goes when your phone sucks. It's an iPhone 7, I'm just, I can't figure out why it overheats so quickly. It's, it's terrible. Doing some mining. Do you know what? I'll tell you a funny story whilst we iron. Back in 2003, I believe it was, yeah, 2003, I joined the British Army uh, when I went to AFC Harrogate. Ironing had to be taught to many troops, like new, new recruits, because they were 16. I mean, how many 16 year olds do you know other than, other than those that are in, you know, cadets or whatever, know how to iron? Now, I was lucky because I wasn't cadets, I'm not ashamed of that, and I knew how to iron, so it wasn't too bad for me, but. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I walked down the platoon lines in Harrogate and Basic and you'd hear this, oh my god, oh god, I'm burning it, I'm burning it. <laughs> because they'd keep the iron on it for like an hour almost, like burning their, <laughs> burning their tunics and their combat shirts. Like, dude, you don't need to hold it on that long and they've even been taught how to do it. It's not like it's a new thing. We we'll need to change my outfit too far away. 
yeah, so it's, it's just funny when they used to do it. You would walk down the hall and you're like, oh God, I've burned it. I'm burning it. Someone, get, get, get a bottle of water. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, I'm sorry I'm not reacting to your comments right now. I'm trying to get some stuff done. It's pretty late here. It's probably late for you guys too. It's uh, quarter after nine at night. I am not feeling good. Like, I feel like garbage. Um, there's been like a sickness going around, people's stomachs and stuff. And today I just, I wasn't feeling it, guys. I felt like absolute garbage. I still do. Haven't eaten anything pretty much all day. I'm trying to kind of keep my, give my stomach a bit of a break from whatever's going on in there. So, so I'm trying to get this done as quickly as I can. We must deploy the afterburner. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, so ironing was always fun in the British Army. Always. You'd always have someone who would have no idea what they're doing or they'd just screw it up or, you know. Got my tunic burning, it's burning. <laughs> yep. That was the days, boys and girls. That was what used to happen. New soldiers having no idea how to iron. And all of a sudden they're ironing the combat shirts or tunics and it's on fire nearly. Brilliant. Just <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Okay, you got one side done. As I said, pockets are the hardest part because they're just fiddly. Now the best thing to do if you've never used, if you're new to the Canadian Army, or you're going into the Canadian Army, or you're already in the Canadian Army, um, I'm not going to teach you guys who are already in to suck eggs, I'm pretty sure you know how to uh, iron your own kit, but if you're new, don't wash your kit, okay, you don't wash it, take it out of the wash, take it out of the dryer when it's all crinkly, and think you're going to be able to iron it good. Put it on its own load, like it put, put the tunic and the pants in on their own load in the dryer at high setting, nice and hot and uh, wrinkle release. You're gonna get rid of like 80 to 90% of your wrinkles and everything else is easy. You just iron from there. It's pretty simple stuff. So just something to be aware of if you are uh, if you are ironing your kit, don't make it hard for yourself, you know? Have the dryer do 90% of the work for you. Most of you are gonna be like, does it shrink, does it shrink? Not really, this material is pretty robust. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't shrink that much. Now if you were to be stupid and put it on an extremely hot wash and then directly throw it inside a red hot dryer, then yes, it probably will shrink and you deserve to have your tunic shrink. But if you've just finished a normal wash and uh, you know it's dried normally on a low cycle, like a low heat, then I, I sound like Martha Stewart right now. He, listen to me, I'm talking about ironing and freaking washing machines. This is what happens when you get old and fat, guys. When you get old and fat, you start talking about ironing and the old stories of Harrogate when in reality, I uh, I just have a lot of pride in my kit. You know, I don't I don't like showing up like a scruff. I know you know there's soldiers out there that really have no interest as a reservist to show up in a good condition, good order. I remember when I'm well, I'm hopefully going to be going back to teach cadets again. But standards is something that you know not a lot of people take seriously. I myself have always taken it seriously. A big part of that is from Harrogate. You know, at 16 years old, I was drilled for a year, like a year of this. Non-stop, every single day, a year of ironing your kit. Every single day, right? So that was how long my basic training was. So for me, it's kind of in, embedded into my brain. I don't even really have the choice to not iron and look after my kit properly. Cause it's just like motor, motor, muscle memory, like, you know, just a motor reaction in my brain that tells me, hey, go sort your kit out cause you're going to work tomorrow. Um, and the same thing applies to Civic Street, I guess. I'm the same kind of way. I don't like showing up like a scruff um, because Image is everything, well not everything, but it's a big part of what you do, especially in the military. And remember, you're actually legally bound to look good in the army. You have military law that tells you, show up in your kit correctly and pristine and the right haircut and stuff. I'm a little scruffly right now. I don't know whether or not to take it off, to shave it or keep it growing. But uh, let's see how hot you are, I might put you back in the fridge. Oh yeah, you're going back in the freezer, boys and girls. Sorry, I'll take you back out in a second. Hold on. Sorry, I have to do this again. Okay, you're going back in. I'll bring you out in a bit. Here's your flashlight. Okay, enjoy. I'll be back.
guys still good in there? Okay, sorry. I still am letting you guys cool down. I think it's still a little too hot. Let me just check. Yeah, you're still a little warm. I'll give you like another five minutes and then uh, I'll, uh, I'll bring you back out again. Okay? Yeah, you should be good now. Bring you back. Yeah, you cool down a little bit. Oh, hold on a sec, guys. Back. There you go. You're back. Okay, cool down a little bit now. Nuggets. <laughs> there are definitely nuggets in there. Okay, back to ironing. So we're on the sleeves now. I managed to finish off the rest of the other side. Sleeves are next. So yeah. If you are joining, make sure you look after your gear, folks. You keep it clean. Don't let line scale get on it. <laughs> and uh, just be proud. Be proud of what you're doing. Don't come up and show them like a bag of baths. Because I can tell you this much. If our BSM caught you looking like a bag of baths, he wouldn't be too happy. So, you know, it's just it's, it's life ownership, right? If you, if you look good, you feel good kind of deal. I'm not kind of one of those preachers that tells you you should do this and do that, but I'm going to try and plug you in as well because apparently you're, uh, you're losing power as well, crying out loud. Just plugging you back in. You need some juice. You're going to be right next to the cactus. And if you can see past the cactus, there we go. Still cactus. There we go. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, back to where we were doing. Last sleeve, guys, we've got pants to do next, which are a little bit more tricky to do than the tunic, to be honest with you. They take a little bit more effort. Plus, with my thick boy pants, it takes a lot more effort. <laughs> um, okay, let's get my uh, hanger here. Put the hanger on. Hang that up, ready to go. No point in ironing kit if you're not going to hang it up afterwards. It just defeats the purpose of actually doing the ironing, really, doesn't it? Uh, put the epaulette on. Epaulette, sorry, round slide. Here we go, boys and girls. The bottom of the totem pole. A gunner of the Royal Canadian Artillery. But that's okay. I'm happy. I don't care. Happy to be at this rank. And you know what? As long as I get to be a part of the, the regiment, I really don't care. But it's going on. Because it's a little ruffly, so to speak. Ruffles are not good. You don't want ruffles on your uh, on your end slide there, folks. They're nice and neat. Definitely no loose threads, because the first thing they're going to see is loose threads, always. And it's a little fiddly, the way that ranks like to set up on these tunics, but we get there in the end. There we go. One times tunic complete. Pants are next. Now my pants, um, I, uh, I use a specific belt. It's not the issued belt, and that's okay. I mean, I've had no concerns about people saying you can't wear that belt, but be aware that your particular regiment or unit may say, yeah, you can't use that, but I haven't been picked up for it yet, so. I'm going to keep using my belt. The problem with this belt is that you can't just unloop it very quickly. You have to actually undo the Velcro and the setting that it's at. So we'll just do that. Because you can't iron with this thing on. It's a pain in the ass. Um, I also have installed, obviously, the old uh, the Gerber that we get issued. Very handy to have. I think every soldier can agree that having a Gerber on you is very useful at all times. So we'll take the belt out of this bad boy. 
as you can see, it's the size of the circumference of the universe. So it's, it's pretty big, pretty beefy belt for me because I'm a beefy boy. Uh, and let's just get going. Start on it. Start with the back, and just go from there, I guess. See what you guys are saying while riding. In. Matt, the missile knows where the missile is at all times. <laughs> It's not wrinkles, it's texture. <laughs> I like that. It's not wrinkles, sir, it's textures. It's just textures, added camouflage. Why do you have, why do you have extra creases? Gonna, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Sort out those creases. <laughs> and we're gonna do the pockets. Again, the pockets are a pain in the ass. Especially if you've had stuff inside of them recently, they get all uncreased where you want them to be, and they're just a pain. So. It's getting late, half past nine. Honestly, my bedtime is only like 11 o'clock anyway, so who am I kidding? But I really do not feel good. Like, I feel terrible right now. It's like, just, my stomach is killing me. Maybe I've got the diabetes. I shouldn't laugh about that, I shouldn't joke about that, it's a serious thing, I'm sorry. Sorry, anyone who has diabetes. I still said it in that word, in that saying. Why did I do that? I'm sorry. I will not quote diabetes anymore. But okay, other side now. We're getting there, folks. Once I've completed the pants, we're in the home stretch. I can finish off doing my kit, pack my PT gear, pack some paperwork. I've got to hand in some paperwork tomorrow night. Pretty important stuff. Uh, I think this weekend we're actually training, which is cool. Uh, so we have a training weekend either next week or this weekend. It's one of the two. Uh, so we've got some training to do, which is always nice because it's time to get back into it. Loose threads die. Okay, good. See how hot you're getting again. Let me make sure you're not overheating again, folks. Yeah, you need to go in the freezer again, folks. Come with us so we don't get lonely. I can't. I can't come in the freezer with you. But you do need to go in again. I'm sorry. I am sorry that I keep having to do this. But if I don't do it, you're going to overheat and then the stream will cut off. There you go. We're back. Oh my god, there's 81 people still watching the stream. I'm going to dive into the nuggets. <laughs> you must be cooling down now. I'm going to keep you in there just for a little bit longer because I've just finished uh, ironing, so I'm going to put the ironing stuff away. I 
believe that was the dryer. <laughs> Talk about getting the cold shoulder. Okay, I'll be back. I'll put the uh, the uh, dry the ironing board away, and then I'll bring you back. Okay. you back on here for a little bit whilst I put my stuff away. So there we go folks, pants and jacket are now ready to go along with the t-shirt. I'll put the ironing board away, I've got all my other little bits and pieces that I need for my tunic there. So it's been a little while, but, uh, oh, that's not a good sign. Tragedy has fallen there. So I've got to be careful with that. There you go, it needs a good clean. My goodness, does it need a good clean. It's been a while since I put it on, but... Oh yeah, it needs it needs a good shaping. It's, in a, it's not in the greatest condition right now. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'll probably reshape it. I'm actually thinking of getting a new one. Because uh, it did actually have a hole in it, I had to get it repaired, so I'll probably get a new one ordered in. But as of right now, the blue ones that we've been transitioned over to in the Canadian artillery are hard to come by. Uh, they're just in short demand, so I'm oh, sorry, in high demand and short supply, so we're kind of stuck with uh, what we have. So I will probably reshape this off stream, not today. We'll do it another day. Um, but yeah, we. Uh, Got everything ironed and ready to go. It's time to uh, pretty much now get my kit ready into the ruck. I do not feel good. I can feel myself wanting to throw up. <laughs> um, we're gonna get my PT gear. Uh, we'll grab some uh, documents I need to take in. Uh, I've gotta get my stuff for PRQ handed in. I'm gonna get a haircut tomorrow because this is disgusting. Like this is horrible. Way too long, <laughs> way too long. The cat badge is also really funky right now. It's supposed to be parallel up and down. The creases are all over the place. It's just a mess right now. We'll get it fixed up for tomorrow though, don't worry. Let's see what you guys are talking about. Matt, breathe a bit, you're nervous. I'm certainly not nervous. Certainly not nervous. But I do need a haircut, look at that. I need a shave. I need a really good haircut, ready for work tomorrow. Do you have an artillery cannon in your backyard? So you're getting an off-brand artillery cannon in your backyard. <laughs> Am I going to join the American Army? No, I'm not. <laughs> Rhodesian short shorts. <laughs> I'm not going to be wearing Rhodesian short shorts, I can tell you that much. That's awesome. Thank you, Matthew, I appreciate it. Anyway, we're going to take this off because uh, I'm not in uniform, so I shouldn't be wearing a headdress without being in uniform. So I'm just going to take that off, have that ready for tomorrow as well. I'll put this somewhere safe. We'll put them away. Dress. Got a couple of spare Canadian only rank slides here, so we'll put them away too. As a gunner, can you wear the watermelon? <laughs> I don't think wearing the watermelon would be a very good idea, to be honest with you. Praise the watermelon. <laughs> there it is. 
Number one, fire! <laughs> Can you imagine launching that thing at someone? Look at it. The water Malone. That is Cad Pat, look at that. <laughs> Watermelon is Cad Pat, guys. That's how they got Cad Pat, is from Watermelon. Look at that. Watermelon? <laughs> no watermelon. Watermelon? <laughs> no watermelon. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> the water Malone, praise the Malone. <laughs> Marry the Malone. Now yeah, look, I mean the Malone is nearly the size of my head. Look at that. Get your screenshots ready, guys. I have the same size head as this watermelon. That is pretty bad. <laughs> I have a fat Swede, a gigantic cad pat watermelon. It's hilarious. We're not gonna cut the watermelon today, Fox. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Storm Matt's house at 725. Oh, that's good. Is that an MRE? Yes, it is a combat MRE. It's actually camouflaged. Everything inside here gives you juicy goodness and then it matches the camouflage pattern. <laughs> Don't know why I'm still holding this melon. My goodness. So I hope you've taken some good screen captures there of me doing that. You're holding a watermelon. I can't see it as invisible like the jackets. Fire it out of the cannon. <laughs> Cat Pat Melon. Are you deploying? No, I'm not deploying. I wish I was deploying. I'm not deploying, though. I really wish I was, but I'm not. Beef watermelon nugget? What? <laughs> I'm presuming you're getting very The frame rate's dropping again. All Canadians have a watermelon carrying pocket as required by law. You know, you probably could put the watermelon in the um, respirator pouch quite easily. I'm pretty sure that watermelon could fit inside the respirator pouch. I'm... I gotta try it now. I, I gotta put the watermelon in the respirator pouch now. It feels like it's it's something I should do. What color are the issued boots on the counter? I'll show you my boots. The issued boots are uh, brown. I don't wear issued boots. Um, and they're not for me. I wear my uh, Rockies. Uh, I absolutely love the Rockies. I'll show you which boots I wear. Put my afterburner away because we're not going to need that anymore. Uh, well, I guess that's broken off. Whatever. Here's my booties, guys. Rockies, baby. These are absolutely outstanding boots. They are so good at what they do. I'm trying not to put them on the counter here because I and we eat off it, but the Rockies are just absolutely outstanding. The SV2s, or two SVs, whatever they're called, such a good boot, such a good boot. Uh, great for the winter. These are actually the insulated ones. I've never had any problems with them being overheating or sweating. I went on PLQ with these. Uh, I went on DP1, not with these. No, I didn't go on DP1 with these. I did go on PLQ with these, and they were absolutely outstanding. <laughs> they were so good. I'm doing the horse with the crown now. Thank you, Raphael. I appreciate that very much, sir. A boot. I find this great to watch. I'm glad you're enjoying it. So yeah, these are my booties. Uh, so they match up with the old pants at the bottom there. So that's how I'm dressed. Uh, with the Rockies, I've already done a video on these boots. So if you're interested in them, go check out that video. Uh, they're not cheap, but they're worth it. And if you're in the Canadian Armed Forces, you can get your boot for gen to allow you to get these nice fancy boots or any kind of boots you want. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to do so because the issued boots are not the greatest. I'm not really supposed to say that, but personally, I'm not a big fan of them, just being honest with you. So, you know, if you're in the armed forces or going into the Canadian armed forces, treat yourself, get yourself boot for gen, get some nice new boots, okay? I'm going to put them away now because I don't need them. Okay, folks, I'm going to have to check your heat, see how hot you're getting. Now you're not too bad right now. You're not too bad. Um, we do need to put all this stuff away though, because right now it's redundant it being here. Okay, uh, I think we're pretty much done now with the ironing stuff. I do need to do some other bits and pieces with these. We don't have to worry about them right now. Do them later. Okay, let's go back to putting my uh, my gear in my pack. 
because that's the last thing that we need to do this evening. So I'm going to unplug you. We're going to see how long the battery lasts on you guys here too. Hello, Dio Brando. Thank you for the super chats. I think you're one of the only super chats I've actually been able to catch and see because it doesn't notify me of any super chat donations you make. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Thank you for the super chats. Very kind of you. Uh, show us your food collection. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, this is not one of those kind of streams. <laughs> Where's the nuggets? Oh my God, why do you want to see nuggets? Oh, I left the light in there. <laughs> that wouldn't have been an interesting slide the next day. Uh, you wanted to see nuggets. Where did I put the nuggets? Why am I showing you nuggets? Oh, here they are. Hey, you happy now? Are you happy now? There's the nuggets. Okay, nuggets. Here's the nuggets that you, for some reason, really wanted to see. A bunch of nuggets made by James. They're apparently James Nuggets. Okay, nuggets. You guys are weird. <laughs> I love you, but you're very, very weird that you wanted to see nuggets. Why do you want to see nuggets? Why? I'm going to put you back in the freezer if you keep acting like that. No, really, I will have to actually put you in the freezer because I think you're going to overheat again. Uh, we're going to put the nuggets in there too because we don't want the nuggets going off. Put the freezer flashlight back in its place, ready for another stream. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's take you guys over here. Say goodbye to the watermelon. Bye, watermelon. <laughs> okay, let's head down this way. You're still not too hot yet, but you're going to probably get hot soon. Okay, let's put you back over here. There we go. Okay, so let's sort out my small pack now. I'm trying my best to keep you guys as cool as I can. I should really try and find a fan or something for you guys. Uh, small pack, we're going to put my helmet. There. We're going to put my small, or my jacket in there. Now the jacket tends to just go in the very bottom because there's no requirement for it to be uh, for it to be accessed at this time of year unless it starts pouring down with rain, which I don't believe it's going to. So we'll just stuff that down the bottom there. There we go. And the side pouches actually, I think we'll put in first because I like having the side pouches available if I need them. You never know. You never know what you're going to do. Right? We'll get the jacket in here too. If you are talking, I'm sorry, I can't read you from this distance. Unfortunately, I don't have the eye of Hawkeye right now to see what you're saying. Okay. Top pouch. Spare rank slides. You never know when you need some spare rank slides. We'll put some name tapes in there too. Uh, PT gear is going to be next. We'll do that later. Okay. Next kit is the tack vest. Um, that battery's dying again. There you go. So the tack vest, folks, uh, I'm gonna try and clean up a little bit because it's got all sorts of bits and pieces in here. First and foremost, water bottle. <laughs> the water's been in here for a while, so we need to clean that out. Uh, what else have we got in here? I'm pretty sure most of this gear has been left over since PLQ. Oh, still good gear, still good. One times mortar glove, two times mortar gloves. Mortar gloves are really nice, it's a kit, really, really handy for in your field. And we have can cream, <laughs> in case you want to get all canned up. Uh, we have my respirator, which I should probably do a little functions test of. Check that it's not filled with dirt, <laughs> which it is. <laughs> wonder how that's happened. I haven't done anything with it since coming up PLQ and I cleaned it then, so. <laughs> gas, gas, gas. Oh, oh it's definitely a lot harder to, uh, to wear this thing with a... <laughs> With the, uh, with the beardage or the stubble. The stubble is not helping whatsoever right now. I mean, it seals, but not very well. So we'll give that a good clean up at some point. For now, it should work just fine. Not that I'm actually going to get attacked, but just so. I'm gonna put that in a respirator pouch. Okay, what else we got going on in here? Uh, these pouches are all clear. I think that's a flashlight in here, a head torch, ear pro, canteen, my pens, 
got a ton of bug spray. This is all from Canada Day where it was getting uh, very, very hot. Now these are the gloves I wear. Uh, these are mechanics gloves. They're really, really good gloves. Really, really nice. I wore them all um, PLQ. Really, really nice gloves. Uh, they work fantastically. Um, they're very good at protecting your knuckles. Lots of uh, dexterity for actually squeezing the trigger and manipulating the rifle. Well used throughout PLQ for sure. Uh, but they work really, really good. So yeah, mechanics. Uh, they're called uh, Impact Impact gloves. Really good gloves, guys. They're uh, they're a little expensive. I agree, they are a little expensive, but they're worth it. Don't waste money on crap gloves because they're just going to ruin themselves. So invest in some good gloves. They're really, really handy. So okay, so. Another set of gloves. I think that's all we have in here. So I need to go and grab some other bits and pieces. Um, I don't think I put my hydration pouch in here. No, I did not. That's good. I don't need it. Uh, we do need ear defense, so I'll go get ear defense. Uh, I've got my GoPro holder for some reason. Everything else is going in the ruck. I don't need it. It's going to go in the ruck. Uh, helmets should be fine. I haven't done anything with the helmet other than maybe put it on with my gas masks or my respirators. So. So I was doing demonstrations for Canada Day. I wore the uh, respirator. There we go. CG634, I believe. Maybe it's not. CG634 helmet. I actually really like the helmet. A lot of people have problems with it. I have no problems. I think it's a great helmet. Um, it looks like you guys are about to die because power. So if I cut off, I apologize. And you're also overheating, I can tell because your frame rates are dropping substantially. Um, we'll probably cut the stream here, folks, actually, just because it's just redundant, keep putting you in the fridge. Uh, I'll have a quick chat with you before I go. What about earplugs? I have earplugs, and um, they're in my small pack, so you do look good in the helmet. Well, thank you. Matt packs 60 kilograms of beef, melons, and nuggets during his deployment. <laughs> no, I do not. I wish I could, I really do. Have you ever done stuff with the Australian Defense Force? Uh, not really, no. I would love to, though. I would love to. No, we need the nuggets. Where are they? Yeah, you guys are going to die any minute now. I can see the heat building up in the back of you. <sighs> Lean the phone against an ice pack. Yeah, I guess I could do that. It's getting late, guys. It's 10 o'clock. I'm probably going to call the, um, the stream quits tonight anyway. So, uh, Yes, you do get a frag vest issue, but only if you're doing training or if you're deployed or if you're part of a specific unit that allows you to have it. So... Um, see you, nerd. <laughs> Shut up, Relogic. Um, that's it for today, folks. Thanks again for hanging out with me today on the stream. Um, I will uh, catch you around on the next one. If you enjoyed these kind of streams, make sure you uh, let me know. Leave a comment section, comment. Uh, leave me a like. And uh, go check out a couple of the new videos I made. Uh, I've got the uh, medium tank, the FNSS, which, by the way, FNSS have, have emailed me telling me I did such a good job of reviewing their medium tank that they're actually sending me a 1 in 35 scale replica tank model to my P.O. box, my mail, mailer box, to, uh, to say thank you, which I thought was amazing. Like an actual military developer is sending me a little scale model tank, which is freaking awesome. <laughs> this is really, really cool. So yeah, they emailed me directly and they're like, we would really like to thank you for doing such an outstanding review on the medium tank of the, uh, the Kaplan tank. So I was like, wow, that's... That's pretty badass. So when it comes through, I'll show you guys uh, on stream and all that sort of stuff. So uh, do I bring a GoPro training? Sometimes I do. Yes. Uh, get some sleep, Matt. Revel at six. <laughs> okay, folks, the phone is literally going to melt in my hand right now. So I'm going to catch you guys later. Thank you so, so much for joining me tonight. And thank you to everyone who's been sending super chats, donations. I don't know if there's anyone else other than uh, the individual I saw earlier. I can't remember who it was, but thank you anyway. And I will catch you around on the next time. And remember nuggets. <laughs> I will make sure I eat my, my nuggets. <laughs> hey, Hitman2 Actual, thank you for your uh, donation there. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, I've got to go now, guys, because literally you're like burning my hand. Uh, I will catch you around later. All the best. And nuggets. Yes, nuggets. Nuggets, 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 nuggets. Nuggets.